So today what I'd like to talk about is motivation. So motivation specifically um, in college. So what motivates people um, and how does that affect their lives? How does that affect what they want to do? How can people improve um, specifically related to college? So how can we become motivated in what we're doing? So especially as students, um, we oftentimes when I ask students, you know, why are you here? Why are you in college? Um, what, essentially what I'm saying, you know, one of the things I'm saying is what's motivating you to be here? And 90% of the students that I ask this question to what they say is, well, I'm here because I want to get a good grade. I want to graduate something along those lines. Other answers I get, you know, people, they're here because their parents are making them be here. Um, they're here because they want um, to to get that degree at the end. Um, they want to graduate. They want to, you know, these, all of these things are good. Um, and they're, that's fine as a, um, a partial motivation. Um, it's not something that I'm saying you, is not going to motivate you, but it's not going to prevent you from accomplishing your goal, but it's not necessarily something, it's not necessarily the best motivation, I guess I would say, um, for helping you feel fulfilled in life, for helping you feel like, wow, this is, I'm really um, getting the most out of what I'm doing in college. So I I guess I'd like for you to just ask yourself, why are you in college? So whatever the reason that you are in college, you know, whatever that is, it can be anything, um, that reason will tell you specifically what type of motivation you have for being in college. Um, and the type of motivation that you have can really change your life, can really change the way you feel and the way that um, you see yourself and the and and everything um so we have these different types of motivation we have external motivation and internal motivation so external this is the type of motivation that all those reasons that i gave before where students will say i'm here because i want to get a good grade you know that's a practical reason nobody's saying that you know it's stupid or this isn't the right answer um because Essentially, if you don't get a passing grade, then you're not going to graduate. You're not. It's like you're wasting all this money, and then you know what? What became of it? So that it's not to say that you shouldn't have some of these external motivations, but the idea here with motivation and the type of motivation you have is that you want to maybe have some more some if some of the internal motivating factors that are pushing you towards your goal um, and here we're talking specifically about college but it can be any goal in your life it could be um, you know going to the gym it could be getting healthy um, so for example if you say I want I'm, I'm gonna go to the gym um, and my reason for going to the gym is because I'm going I need to lose 10 pounds by 10 by a month from now that's kind of an external motivation because this is something that you're setting yourself up for um, a specific target of of weight and that's there's nothing wrong with that but if you don't meet that goal how, what's gonna happen then chances are you're gonna feel you're gonna feel some sense of uh, decline in or or a decline in emotion or not feeling so positive or so great and it depends on who you are and and, and who what this apply who this applies to but um, it's almost like you're setting yourself up for failure so the idea is that you want to change your motivation not change but you want to get some of those internal motivating factors so what is it inside of you that's pushing you to go after what you want you have let's say for example going to college um, so you want to look at maybe what is it that you're learning when you're in these classes? 
maybe not the basic level classes where you, that you have to take. And even though you have to take those classes, you still want to maybe turn it into something positive and, and try to see what, what is it that I'm really getting out of this class? Am I learning something? So you're looking at, okay, I'm learning something and this, this is actually kind of cool. I didn't really know this before. Maybe you're reading your textbook and you're like, oh my gosh, wow. So that's why that is why it is. And it's uh, if you get those kind of aha moments, you want to really focus on those aha moments and focus on the, that, that, that learning, that knowledge, that level, that feeling of, of pride in the, in the sense of learning, in the sense of accomplishing um, these different things. Maybe you took a test and you did get an A. You want to focus on maybe the, the sense of pride that you felt in really understanding the material. So that, um, that's, you know, kind of how you maybe want to combine some of your external motivation with the internal motivation because having more of the internal motivation is really going to help you um, feel more of a sense of fulfillment. And when I say fulfillment, now fulfillment's not just something that people say I want to be fulfilled and this is I'm going to do it and there's nothing that's going to stop me. That's great. Um, that's a great attitude to have, but it's not necessarily um, something that is easily attainable for every single person. So there was someone called Maslow, and he created what, what was known as the, this hierarchy of needs. And you can see it here in this chart. Um, basically, um, the idea here is that from the bottom, you can see the physiological needs. These are... So from the bottom all the way to the top, the bottom is where it starts. People need to have these needs before they can move on or progress to the next level of needs. So here at the very bottom, you see the physiological needs. This is the basic, basic food and water. If you're um, homeless, if you're on the side of the road, you don't have food, you don't have water, you're begging people for money, it's going to be a little bit difficult for you to be in a class, college class, saying to yourself, you know what, I'm really feeling a sense of fulfillment in the in this paragraph that I just read from this textbook. It's it's not going to be easy for that to happen, and I'm not saying that it can't happen. I'm just saying that according to Maslow, you need to have your basic needs met before you it, before it becomes easier for you to focus on these other things because your body uh, biologically is going to be in survival mode. It's saying, I need, I need substance, I need water, I need um, whatever, food, in order for me to, to be able to function, in order for your brain to function. Um, so, so, th so that's um, the f physiological needs. That needs to be met before you go on to having um, you know, the next thing. So you also need to have your safety needs met. If you just lost your job, and you don't know, you know, you have a little bit of money now, but you don't know what's going to happen a month from now. You might get evicted from your apartment. You have nowhere to live. There's no sense of stability there. So your safety needs are not really met. Your focus in your mind is going to be on, again, survival. I need to know that I'm going to live past a month from now. So that's what you're really going to be focusing on before you can really get to that fulfillment, this um, self-actualization at the top. You know, the next one, loving, belonging, sense of, of being a part of something, whether that's with friendships, um, whether that's with family. If you go home um, and you're living with your mom and your dad and your brother or sister, whoever it is, you know, and, the, and you have that sense of, um, feeling like they care about you, then you you have that sense of loving and belonging. However, that's not the, necessarily the case for everyone. Um, not everyone can go home and have and live with their family or have friends that they can just call up at, at the drop of a hat and talk to about their lives. So there's other things that people can do in those situations. They can join groups. They can join clubs. Specifically at in college, there's clubs that are set up for students to join so that this is one of the, not only are they, you know, joining the club for whatever um, reason the club is setting up to be 
to, to do, uh, but they can also fulfill this sense, this need, the sense of belonging. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to just be a club. Uh, if we're talking about college, though, and, and specifically motivation related to that, then I would say that you it's probably a good idea to join a club in college. Um, research suggests that the more social relationships that you build, that students build in college, the better that they do overall in college as far as grades go, as far as um, attendance, and overall satisfaction in college. So one of the ways to do that, it's, it can be difficult to just walk into a classroom and say, hey, how are you doing? My name is blah, 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 and I want to be friends with you. Um, it's impractical sometimes to do that, especially in college where you just a lot of times are walking in, sitting down, listening to a lecture, and walking out. Um, you know, and if you can do that, more power to you. But joining a club can is something where everyone's coming together as in a social way and saying let's all come together and do this focus on this one thing as a group um, so that can be helpful um, if you don't want to join a club you know you can join students can join other things if it's whether it's a religious affiliation um, that can you know whatever is relevant and suitable for for that person um, and even you know romantic relationships can fulfill that um, that need. So what you know after that's met, that needs met, then you don't you know it's not something that your brain is necessarily focusing on. So then esteem needs is the next level, and this is you know a sense of achievement, a sense of recognition, um, earning the respect of others, and having a sense of independence. So if you go to work and people have no respect for you, and they're you know you're kind of low on the on the on the ladder, people just throwing papers at you, just barking orders at you, you have no sense of real, you're just kind of following the crowd, you have no sense of this is me, I'm a sense of self, I can be myself, people respect me, I'm independent. If that's not happening, then it's going to be difficult to meet the, the last, the, the top level of what Maslow would call self-actualization. Self and this is where you know you get that sense of fulfillment in doing the things that you do in everyday life, um, and and that has a lot to do with really getting to know who you are as a person, um, and what are your values, what do you enjoy, um, you know, if it's if you have the sense of enjoyment of of painting, then you know taking math classes and only doing math throughout your entire life, being an accountant or whatever it is. Is might not give you that sense of fulfillment that you need. So, so here the self actualization is really finding what it is that that you that makes you feel that that personal growth, that personal satisfaction, that personal fulfillment, and you can really look for that in the things in the everyday things that you do in in classes. What what is it that you're enjoying about being in class? Um, for me personally, um, when I was in class, um, working on my doctoral degree, I'm still working on my doctoral degree, but taking, um, some of the classes when I would see, I'm a therapist and when I would see clients being able to apply some of the stuff that I learned in my classes, in the work that I did with clients and then seeing that progress with them kind of gave me a sense of fulfillment. Now, obviously that's not going to be the same for everyone, but you really have to find what it is that works for you. So maybe um, sharing the knowledge that you're learning with your parents, with you, with a friend, um, you know, whatever it is. So the next we're going to talk about, you know, the plan for for getting becoming motivated. So here you see um, some of the, these are some of the different things that you can specifically do um, to help you get more motivated. Um, we, are, we talked about, you know, the importance of motivation, the types of motivation, um, the way that not everyone can become motivated unless you have your other needs met. So here, so what is the plan here? So you want to overcome any of your doubts, any of your fears, I'm not saying all of them, but you want to look at maybe some of the ones that are kind of over, overextended or they're just like, 
outlandish, maybe just they're something that is not necessarily going to happen, um, but you have this fear that it might happen, or or this is something that maybe you've learned to kind of have a fear of. So for me personally, right now I'm working on my dissertation or what some people would call a thesis for my doctoral degree. And, you know, one of the fears that I have and, and doubts is that there's no way I'm going to be able to do this. There's no way I'm going to write a dissertation. This is going to take over my entire life. I'm not going to be able, it's too difficult. And, you know, honestly, these are all the mess. I know I didn't come up with these messages on my own. These are all messages that I heard from other people, that I heard from people who have done their dissertation, who, who finished their PhD. So, so having getting all these messages, and every single person I've talked to that has done a dissertation, they have there's a negative message that they that is kind of sent. And I I it's something that I've learned. It's a it's a learned obstacle that I've created because I've taken on that message and believed it to be to be so. So now I kind of have this fear of doing my dissertation because it's I feel like it's going to be too too much, too challenging. I'm not going to be able to do it. It's a it's, it's just something that is going to be difficult. So for me personally, I need to overcome that fear. And you know, there's different ways that people overcome their fears. One of them is facing your fears. You know, in this specific situation, I might um, take it into small chunks, so I'm not, you know, looking at the whole dissertation at once. But you know, I'm starting with, you know, one day at a time. It's almost like one day at a time. But you're just starting with something small, something simple, writing your first sentence. You know, something like that. But you got to start somewhere. Um, the next thing, putting adversity and failure into perspective. So if you had a situation where maybe you took a class and you failed that class, I'm not going to say that that's never happened to me because I've tried, there's, um, when I was doing my undergraduate degree, I had to do um, an introductory to statistics class. And for some reason, I thought it would be a great idea to take this class online. So... You know, maybe, you know, for other classes, you know, I've taken them online and it's it's been a success. I, you know, I passed the classes. Um, I'm not the best at math, so, but I thought, okay, online, whatever, I'll just get it over with. It's not a big deal. You know, what I realized is that, you know, three quarters into the semester when I was failing all the tests that I'm not going to really be able to do this class online. So I had to drop the class. Um, and you know, dropping a class um, after the designated drop date um, can affect you. It will stay on your transcript, just so you know. For um, it'll be on that transcript forever. Um, and you know, that was my situation. Um, so that was one of the failures that I had related to college. But you know what? I I took that as a, a learning point. So the next semester. Was I going to take another online class statistics? No, definitely not. Um, so, I, you know, I took the class in person uh, or face-to-face -face and, you know, I really realized that statistics was not my strong point. So I had to focus more on that class than any of my other classes. Um, and it really put things in perspective as far as, you know, what where I needed to place my focus and time management and things like that. Um, the next thing, identify and clarify what you value in life. We kind of talked about that already. You really want to figure out what matters most to you. And that's not going to be the same for anyone else. So that's something that's really important. If you're choosing a major and you feel like your parents really want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or an accountant, and your passion is somewhere else, maybe writing or um, art or something like that, you know, you have to really think. I'm not saying that you should go for the art or writing because, you know, there might be other factors that you need to consider, like um, compensation, you know, money at the end of, you know, the degree and when you're trying to look for a job, things like that. So there's a lot of things you have to consider, but you want to really figure out what matters most to you um, and how can you apply that in the different things that you're doing how can you apply that in the call in the classes that you're taking um 
and the majors that you're choosing. Because if you go, you know, pick something that you really, really hate and, you know, that's the career that you end up with, you're not going to be happy. And we can go back to, you know, saying, well, you got to find, you know, happiness in everything you do. And, you know, that might be true. But, you know, starting now is the time where you want to figure out, okay, what is it that I can do to make me happy, but also satisfy some of these other requirements that I need in my life as well, like, you know, money that might be important or having respect or, or whatever it is that you might need or that you value in life. So clear up the past through forgiveness. This is just something that um, that I've added here because um, if you really, uh, something that maybe has happened to you and you're kind of holding a grudge about it, that can affect you. Um, I can say that this has happened with people I've talked to as far as um, picking people for their, for their committee on their dissertation. If they pick um, people, committee members, and those, that, those people, the, the members are really telling them what to do and, and, it's, and the person's just not happy with that, they start to get angry with the committee member, it's going to be difficult for them to move forward with their dissertation holding that grudge. So that's not just to say grudges against maybe your, your professor because your professor gave you bad grade. Although, yeah, you, you do want to kind of move past that um, for different reasons. You shouldn't even be holding a grudge about that anyways. Um, but you want to also look at the different people in your life and your the past that maybe it might be holding you back from from other from different things. Like if you're so angry and focused on one thing in your life, it can be difficult for you to focus on other things. So that's just um, what that's about as far as um, moving through forgiveness. And you know, um, forgiveness and and what that really has to do with is letting yourself free from whatever the the anger or grudge is about. Because chances are. You're not causing any pain to the other person that, that you're angry at. They might not even know that you're angry with them. It could be 10 years later and you still have this grudge. They've gone on with their life. So really, forgiveness is about letting yourself move past these things. The next thing is focus on your attitude. So optimism versus pessimism. Everybody knows about looking at the glass as half full. You know how important that is. But, you know, you don't want to go, go through life with um, thinking that everything is rainbows and sunshine. You want to be a realist, but you want to be optimistic at the same time. So an optimistic realist. So you don't want to just say, you know, oh, if it's raining outside, you don't want to say it's not raining. But you want to say maybe, oh, this gives, um, this is a great chance for the flowers to bloom. So you want to look at the, the real situation and just kind of put a positive spin on things. If you did get a bad grade, on a test that could kind of help how, you know you want to think about how can I look at this optimistically um, you know now you know um, what you might need to study for the next test given and now you know where your weak points are for for whatever it is that you're gonna study for so here uh, basically just wrapping it up um, you know we're reflecting on everything we talked about here. Um, you want to convert, not necessarily, even though it says convert, you want to really just make sure you're including internal motivation with external motivation. If it's all about internal motivation, more power to you if you can get, get through with that um, and achieve your goals with just internal motivation, that's great. Although, you know, I, I'm also, I'd like to say I'm a realist and say that we're not going to class just to say that we learned something. You know, we do want to make sure that, you know, you want to make sure that you get, that you pass the class. Otherwise, you're taking the class again. So um, I, I would say that you want to maybe combine the two. Um, recognizing power, power of, of positive thoughts. Um, positivity is definitely important. Positive thoughts um, is correlated to... Um, lower levels of depression, um, feeling better, clearer thinking, um, better memory, all of these things uh, have to do with positive thoughts. Um, stepping outside of your comfort zone, a, a lot of times people get, get into a routine 
and their routine is this is how I'm going to study and because this is all I know I'm gonna you just do it this way but you really want to step outside of your comfort zone if it especially if that's not working so go to the writing lab if you need to go to the writing lab go to the math lab like you have there's so many different resources in the college that you have that will help you um, a lot of times people are afraid to, to do these different things but just you know if you want to succeed and you're having difficulty you want to step outside of your comfort zone and that's um, I think that's important um, we talked about forgiveness don't give into defeat um, picture yourself as optimistic and motivated and this is kind of um, a almost like a, a therapeutic technique where you're just visualizing yourself as being a certain way um, and so if you picture yourself at the end um, picture yourself at graduation you know throwing your cap in the air um, standing next to your friends uh, your families up in the um, bleachers or wherever it is you know looking at you taking pictures and you're walking across the stage you know this is um, visualization technique that you can do and that really can help you feel a sense of motivation So that's pretty much all we're going to talk about um, as far as motivation in college goes. Um, hopefully this was helpful.